Hello, this is your study partner. So for today, I have got you few concepts that is definitions in PSM. I know, annoying, right? So let's just crack up those definitions and we'll promise each other that we'll never make any kind of mistake again in any kind of exam. Okay? Yes. So for today's part, let's deal about infectious diseases. Yeah, I know, annoying stuff. So, okay, in infectious diseases, what type of definitions would you expect? So, first thing, it is communicability. I'll tell you what the textbook definition says. The textbook definition says that it's the ability of the disease agent to be transmitted from an infective to a susceptive host, either directly or indirectly. Yeah, yeah, all of us have textbooks. We have all read that. But how do we make sure that we don't get confused from the other stuffs? So, let, let, take a very simple example. In your own uh, PARC textbook or any other textbook, any medicine textbook or community medicine textbook you follow, you have two sections. One is communicable disease and non-communicable disease, right? So, why is that classification basically made? Because this disease can get transmitted from one person to another. Whereas here, that does not occur. So basically, whenever when people ask you what is communicability, just remember this split up that your textbook has split up few diseases into communicable, few diseases into non-communicable, right? So whichever disease falls in this category, you make your definition from that. Now, let's say for a very simple illustration, I'll take head louse. So, head louse is obviously transmittable from this person to this person, right? So, it makes it communicable. So, so whenever you see communicability, just remember this head louse. So, ability of this louse to go from this person's head to another person's head is your communicability. Simple. Okay. So, next, next definition we'll see is infectivity. Okay. Infectivity is ability of the disease agent to invade and multiply inside the body of the host. Okay, so for this, please be careful. What did I tell? It is the ability of the agent to invade and multiply. Let's take the same example, your head louse. Your head louse can enter into this person's head, right? Yes. Does it stop there? No. It can multiply. Annoy this guy and infect furthermore what did i say infect furthermore right so this head louse has ability to cause infection what is infection it is able to multiply in the in your human body right for example take rats rats are rats infective no right why am I using such blunt, stupid, abrupt examples? So that it becomes very obvious and we don't forget this in the exam. I can also tell technical terms like invade and multiply in the body of the host. But I'm trying to avoid that. Our textbooks have already done that. And we are thankful that they have confused us enough. So what I'm doing is I'm taking blunt, stupid daily examples. Which is so obvious that you literally laugh at my examples and definitions and... Most importantly, you will never forget this. Yes, now you might give me all hate comments and dislikes in the video, but I don't care. But ultimately, when you get this question in the exam, you're going to rock it. That's for sure. So let's say this guy has a rat in his head. First of all, is it even possible? No. No. Is it infective? No. So now you clearly know what's a communicable, what is communicability and what is infectivity. Right? You'll never confuse. So all, your, all the organisms which can invade in your body, which can sit in your body and basically multiply head louse and your entire microbiology textbook. Staph, strep, micro, mycobacterium, neisseria, everything. So all those come, count for your infectivity. Okay, now next is pathogenicity. Okay, so let's go back to our favorite head loves so what is pathogenicity pathogenicity is ability to invade after invading it will even cause clinically apparent illness 
so it will not just invade but it will annoy this guy it will cause scalp dermatitis right yeah my diagram suck i know never mind so this ability to cause your clinically apparent illness so that it becomes obvious to the physician right so pathogenicity i'm sure it's easy clinically apparent illness right so this is your um pathogenicity so same thing rats are not infective so it cannot cause any pathogenic pathogenicity right so pathogenicity is the later effect of infectivity right it's kind of clear now so first thing what happens to a person is any infective agent is any infective agent okay mark my words so first thing firstly it becomes communicable okay after it becomes communicable if at all it is communicable it will come means what it has ability ability to come to you so ability to get transmitted so that is your communicable after it is communicable it will come sit on your head and multiply that is it will become infective after it becomes infective after it has already sat in your head and multiplied now it will cause your lice infestation your scalp dermatitis or whatever so now it will cause you pathogenicity so communicability comes first infective later pathogenicity at the end okay okay so lastly after pathogenicity now this person has the disease okay he has the your life lice infestation so what will happen to this guy one he'll get cured two he doesn't get cured right so same thing same concept as your pathologies reversible irreversible injury i'm applying it here so that is your virulence 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 is ability to produce severe illness yeah very bad very virulent remember your virus computer virus it's very bad right very bad it's it causes case uh, it does all severe cases so remember this virulence as severity okay severity so severity means this guy will have severe infestation he'll die due to some stupid thing yeah okay now on a serious note virulence of louse infestation is very less right virulence of measles is high virulence of sars is very high right so virulence has is nothing but ability to cause severe cases so after pathogenicity your last step will be virulence now just to simplify things up a bit remember that you can remember this luckily in alphabetical order so first is communicable next is infective next is pathogenicity next is virulence okay i'll be coming up with the next video on serial interval generation time incubation period and all this stuff in any case let's i hope this video was helpful to you so all the best for your exams do it well.